Yeah, they're fast. Hey everyone, welcome to Trail Sage, and this week we're talking about the Hoka Rincon 3. Now, I bought these shoes about three weeks ago, and I gotta tell you, they were an instant hit for me. They've been great on my shorter runs and training days, and the springy but comfortable midsole combined with the lightweight makes this an absolute blast to run in. Coming from the original Rincons, which was one of my favorites, I was glad that not too much had changed. However, there are some differences between them, but before we go over that, let's jump into the specs. The Rincon 3 weighed in at 7.1 ounces at size 8.5 US. The heel stack is 33 millimeters and the forefoot is 28, giving this shoe a 5 millimeter offset from back to front. The engineered mesh has been upgraded slightly but still remains light and breathable. The tongue and laces have also received an update and are noticeably thinner. The pull tab is still there but has also been reduced in size. Regarding looks, the Rincon still has that signature full EVA midsole with the classic metal rocker design, creating a comfortable but fast ride and still retaining a responsive feel. Moving to the sole, Hoka has revamped it to include a little bit more rubber but still has a lot of exposed EVA for added weight savings. And finally, the shoe comes in several colorway options and is offered in a regular or wide size. Okay, so now that you know the specs, let's jump into my likes. One of my favorite things about the original Rincons was the weight, and I'm happy to report that even though it's a tad bit heavier, they are still a ridiculously light shoe. I imagine the slight weight gain was due to the extra rubber on the sole, but as someone who runs in varying terrain in all conditions, I'll take the tiny weight penalty. And speaking of terrain, I've been using mine on not just the pavement, but also on gravel and even on some buffed out trails. Although, I do want to note, if you are going to use this on trails, I wouldn't take this on anything other than hard packed dirt. And even though it's not a plush ride like the Clifton's or the Bondi's, there's still enough EVA here to soften any impact without losing any of the responsiveness. I'm also happy to say there was no initial break in period for me. From the minute I put these shoes on, I could tell they were more responsive and springy than my original Rincons. You can really feel that metal rocker propelling you forward when you're putting down the power, and I absolutely love that. The plush collar and heel really cup your foot and when laced up, secures everything in place ensuring a good lockdown. The mesh has a little bit of give to it making it comfortable to wear and yet still remains breathable which should help on those hotter days. Okay, so what are my dislikes? Well, I have two major annoyances and one minor concern. The first dislike is the tongue. In addition to not being gusseted, the lower profile and thin design make it hard to adjust and even though it hasn't affected my comfort, I could see this being an issue on longer runs or for some folks, leading to the laces rubbing on the top of the foot. The other thing that I dislike are these thin laces. I realize this is a personal preference, but I like the thicker tongue and laces on the original Rincons. They were easier to tie and felt more robust. Again, I haven't had any lockdown issues in them, it's just one of those things that I wish they hadn't changed. Anyway, the last one is less of a dislike and more of a concern. Although I love the new softer mesh, it's definitely lost some breathability compared to the originals. Using the hair dryer test, you can clearly see the tissue paper moving more on the Rincon ones. Now don't get me wrong, these new Rincons are still very breathable, but it's certainly a little bit of a step down. Now I can also see this new sandwich mesh design holding on to a little bit more moisture too. When I shine a light from the inside, you can see the difference in the mesh pretty easily. Well, that does it for all my dislikes, so let's jump into pricing. You can find these Hoka Rincon 3s for about $115 to $120, which is a tremendous bargain and perhaps the biggest selling point. But with its inexpensive cost and minimal rubber on the sole, you might be wondering how long this shoe will last. Well, my original Rincons have close to 300 miles on them and they still have some life to give, so I imagine the new Rincon 3s will probably have the same durability. So if you're looking for a good race day shoe or a lightweight trainer, then this Rincon 3 could be a great option for you. I've been enjoying mine on everything from the road to gravel and even some light trail work. It fits comfortably around my foot and even with all the cushioning, it still provides good responsive feedback. I would highly recommend this shoe to anyone, especially at this price point. Well, that does it for this review. I hope that was helpful to you. If you have any feedback or questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Where's that? Oh, there's the shadow right there. So, gotta watch out for that mic. Even though the new Rincons are a tad bit happier, tad bit happier, even the new, new I realize this is a personal preference. Uh, it's raining and we're doing yard work? Although I, less of a, but rather, 
more of a concern. It's like an airport outside. <laughs> Holding on to more, more moisture too. Holding on to more, 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 more moist, holy crap. Whew, this is gonna be tough. You would think the international airport is like next door to my house. Uh, I'm leaving on a jet plane. I don't know when I'll be ruining Sage's videos.